Hi, I'm Tyler Falls. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at a heavily requested Kurtzgazat video called We Lied to You and We'll Do It Again. <laughs> Let's take a look. Kurtzgazat is lying to you in every video, even in this one, because our videos distill very complex subjects into flashy 10 minute pieces and unfortunately reality is, well, complicated. The question of how we deal with that is central to what we do on this channel and something we think about a lot. What we mean by lying is the concept of lies to children. The idea that on the path to explaining something complicated, you start off with a little lie, a useful oversimplification that makes it easier to grasp a concept. For example, as a kid, you learn that the Earth is a sphere orbiting the Sun with planet buddies. But it's not actually a sphere, and the buddies are super different in size and not close to each other at all. By beginning at a place of oversimplification, you're building a framework. It's not a bad lie. I'm not sure I'd call that one a lie. But yeah, I can see what they're getting at with the whole over uh, oversimplification. But... Then again, based on that logic, I'm, I'm a liar too when I explain any nuclear stuff here. <laughs> a foundation that you can then build upon and add nuance and complexity later on. Step by step, you're getting towards the real gist of the complicated subject. Science communication has to use lies to children to some degree, or it turns into science education. And getting a proper education in all of the we scientific don't want that. fields <laughs> would take years of intense study to become fluent in them. As a species, yeah. we have a major interest in summarizing science and its advancements and educating as many people about it as possible because we all benefit if more people have a fact. Hey, and that's why it's good to have field experts um, watch these videos and talk about them, right? <laughs> so they can, pull, they can help fill in the gaps a little bit. Based scientific worldview. We will discuss what science is and how it works in different videos in more detail, but for now, let's just say it's a process to advance, organize, predict, and test our knowledge about the universe. If you understand the current state of scientific knowledge, then you can make better decisions based on facts and testable ideas, rather than outdated belief systems or our intuition that evolved to protect our ancestors from lions, but is no longer suited for the complexity of our modern world. Outbreak. I see what they did there. Lions and lying. That's that's clever, Chris Gazan. Are comically ill prepared to navigate the fast moving world we happen to live in today. A world ironically created by science. A few hundred years ago, it was possible to be knowledgeable at an expert level in pretty much every field of study. In the information age, that this is a done. futile endeavor since knowledge and data are increasing exponentially. So to even have a chance of grasping the world we live in, we need summaries that give us, if not a true understanding of all the details, a solid overview. Explaining science to many people is not about enlightening the ignorant, but necessary for the progress of our species at large. To make this possible, we need to find metaphors and stories that capture the true nature of things as much as possible, while using a language that our brains can deal with. A great example here is physics. Quarks are often depicted as blue, red, and green, with different spins. But just saying spin and using colors forces our brain to imagine colorful spinning balls. Which is great to visualize the different types and the relate. Yeah, I see what they're getting at. Just a visualization. That's not what quarks actually look like or how they behave. Same thing with anything else with atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons. The classic atomic model where... You have the protons and neutrons form like this little um, core that, um, like a star, and you have like the electrons orbiting it like a solar system, even though it's just pure crazy randomness. But that that makes a little less interesting of a logo for, say, the Ato the International Atomic Energy Association or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. That's an okay lie. Chips between quarks, but also creates a very wrong image of reality in our heads. 
Molecules are nothing like the neat diagrams that we're taught in school, but buzzing and vibrating entities held together by something we call charge that describes how certain things want to be close or escape each other for some unknown reason. We're describing phenomena that we are pretty sure exist in some form or another because the maths works out and we can do real-world experiments and predict their results before we do them. In reality, these are models, tricks to summarize what we know, yeah. and make up a coherent story and prepare the ground for more in-depth explanations. Don't confuse the description of a thing for the thing itself. Simplifications like these are not just meant to dumb things down, they're actually useful for experts themselves. You could argue that's true about language. Just describing something in words is what? 10% of communication communicating the actual thought, but there's really just so much more depth to everything when it comes to having a conversation and certainly when talking about science. Hmm. For example, chemists who use wrong electron shell models to work out chemical bonds, or scientists using simplified models as the basis for discussion with colleagues across different scientific fields. But the simplification of science can also be problematic for a bunch of reasons. Finding the true nature of reality is super hard because our brains did not evolve for this job, and the universe doesn't care if we understand it. Science is a process to work towards gaining knowledge and not an absolute truth generator. The answers it provides are multi-layered and nuanced, and that complexity can get lost when it's simplified, especially when it's done so for headlines. An interesting yeah. cancer study turns into a potential cure. A healthy food becomes the basis for a new diet. Such simplifications give a misleading definiteness to science, which goes against its process-like nature. When cures don't materialize and diets don't turn out to be magical, we lose confidence in science and start to think of all science communication as misleading. Then there's the opposite effect. If a simplification is too engaging, if the story it tells is too good, it can distort the true complexity of a subject and give you a full sense of security and an illusion of deep knowledge. A gut feeling that you understand the science better than you actually do, which can lead people to ignore actual experts over their dangerous superficial knowledge. And That's one of the things that I kind of came up like when I was in college, for instance, there's like, oh, I, I know a good bit of things. And then you start re learning how little you really know. And then that's where you get a lot of that knowledge from. You start asking those questions. And but it is challenging to find a reputable source these days if you do not know the proper channels. Um, and that is part of the reason and part of the things that experts do and it's not just their own knowledge but they know just the right channels the right people to talk to it's uh because there is so much misleading data out there and a lot of it you can't really blame people you really can't gut feeling and this can have negative consequences for all of us because in the worst case overconfidence in your own understanding of science can lead to bad decisions made with confidence. Yep. Just think of the surge of people that confidently disavow vaccines or climate change without truly understanding the subject matter. Or nuclear power. I'm just gonna th I'm gonna throw that one right out there. That people think nuclear power is constantly polluting the atmosphere with radioactivity, even though it's one of the safest, cleanest, rel most reliable um, energy source capable of producing baseload electricity in bulk quantities. But people don't really know that, and well, that's part of the reason why I have a YouTube channel. So considering all of this and the fact that we at Kurzgesagt reach millions of people with... By the way, if, if you like this, please be sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe, um, and join me on my journey towards a clean, safe, reliable nuclear energy future. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Videos, how do we handle this? Well, it has been a journey, especially the research. When we started, we just read articles, then moved on to books, peer-reviewed papers, then to conversations with experts. We began to collect our sources. With every step, we realized that we were still not doing enough. 
Nowadays, we try to read as many primary sources as possible, talk to multiple experts and document our simplifications and give further reading in our sources doc. That's good. But this doesn't make our process flawless. What do you do if experts disagree with each other? What do you do if you find an amazing fact that perfectly fits a narrative but just can't find its primary source? How do you deal with the reality that many scientific results have huge error bars or maybes attached to them? Mm -hmm. How do you handle complex systems that defy easy answers? In the end, we make 10 minute videos, so we need to make decisions about what details and explanations can fit, which aspects need to be simplified and which parts to cut. There is no single best answer for how to do this, and so we weigh the different options every single time. It can be painful for experts to see their fields simplified. Some are happy with us, while others don't like it. This I'm happy with um, Kurtzgazat specifically. There is some there is some out there on, on YouTube that I'm less keen on with their oversimplification, but at least in terms of nuclear, people, there's a lot of misconceptions out there but also impossible to avoid. We're still trying to improve and want to be transparent about what we're trying to do. For example, we're taking part in the Tresca project about science communication to mm. learn more. All of this brings us to the purpose of our videos. The most important thing we want to do with this channel is to inspire you and spark your curiosity for science and the amazing universe we live in. Learning often doesn't feel like fun. But with the right story, it is one of the best things, and we hope to provide that to you. Ultimately, we hope that we light a fire in you that motivates you to read books, pay more attention at school or university, and just get interested in a scientific field or two and learn more on your own. Not because you have to, but because you want to know more about how Very the world uplifting. really works. Because the universe is beautiful, and science is a way of seeing this beauty more clearly. And we hope that knowing that we have to simplify a bit does not make you enjoy our videos less. We are trying to build something with Kotzkazat, and while we're not 100% sure yet what exactly, hopefully something that gets people to think about their own life and the context they exist in today, as well as the far future and the potential we all have as a species. And of course, how big things are, and what happens when we blow stuff up, because it's fun. Thanks for watching <laughs> and sharing and supporting us. We really can't do this without you. Running a science communication business is a balancing act that we take extremely seriously. On the one hand, we need to be responsible and... And they were getting to their sponsors. Yeah, um, you know what? If, like I said earlier, if you call this lying, then I'm also a liar too, just for the purpose of simplifying things. Mainly because I don't want to bore you guys with a bunch of textbook type nuclear energy presentations. I've uh, I've done many many of those, many uh, many projects like that, many reference procedures. Um, I don't want to put everyone who watches this channel through that too. So I totally understand where they are coming from with that, but. Let me know what your thoughts are on this down in the comments section. If, um, and also let me know your feedback for me too. Um, do you think I'm leaving out too many things? Could I expand a bit more? Do you already think I'm nerding out too much and going into way too much detail without context? <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.